Okay. We'll call the uh, budget committee to order, and uh, first item is the approval of the minutes from uh, October 7th or October 16th. I'm sorry. Moved by Supervisor McDivitt, seconded by Supervisor <coughs> Wild. Wild. Uh, any additions, corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, in the handout before you, uh, you have my uh, recommendations for uh, reductions in appropriations. You also have my uh, recommendations for changes in revenues. And the longer legal size sheet is the personnel request. Frank, I have to ask you, um, we don't include 2019 um, budget numbers in here so we can see a delta from year to year? Uh, no, not in these sheets, no. You have the department head request, whether uh, <coughs> it's a plus or a minus, and uh, what I recommend. In general, what's the, what's the appropriations increase this year? Appropriation increase? I can tell you how much I reduced it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. Just a second. That's basically what I'm, I'm trying to get a hand on. Uh, the appropriation increase uh, overall for the general fund is $372,412 currently at this point. I'll sign the budget by Friday, so there's still time to uh, make adjustments. Uh, the sales tax, as far as what's budgeted in, in the 2020 proposed budget, is uh, the 2018 actual, <coughs> which is uh, 55 million, 15,895. Uh, that's an increase overall of sales tax of 2.8 million, and uh, half of that is about 1.4 for to the county. Uh, also part of this is uh, the fund balance appropriation that's uh, usually in the budget uh, has been reduced by $257,422 to $1 million. The allowable increase to the tax levy was uh, 2.79 or is 2.79% which is $1,217,647. <coughs> So with the $372,000 increase in the levy, it's, it's a 0.85% <coughs> increase to the levy. 0.85. Frank, yes. may I ask a question? Just in, in general terms, uh, does your budget reflect uh, the potential uh, implications of bail reform as it relates to the, the sheriff's office probation? Uh, uh, does, does it anticipate uh, uh, potential changes and in, in, in potential increase in personnel? Uh, yeah, the best the best way to see that is uh, through the personnel request. I think that's uh, there's an additional position in the sheriff's office. If, uh, an, an additional uh, eight ADA and, uh, and a law clerk for the DA's office. Uh, I think there's one other position. What about probation? Uh, no, he he didn't. Okay. Didn't feel that he, he needed okay. anybody else. Okay. 
There is an additional position in probation, but it's covered by the uh, ACH. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Diamond. Thanks, Frank. Um, this question is for Ryan. Ryan, what's your estimated current unrestricted fund balance that we have? I, I believe it's about uh, once we're done doing uh, a couple of the things that uh, factoring in a couple of the things we've done this year. I think it's about 19.9 million right now. And Frank, what do you estimate your fund balance will be if this uh, budget is adopted as is with the $300,000 um, increase? What's your fund? What do you anticipate the fund balance being at the beginning? Of the beginning of the year? Yeah. Uh, Unrestricted. My estimate was probably about 21. So tentatively we'd be looking at an increase of $2 million uh, in fund balance from 2019 to 2020. I would say. I think that's fair. We'll know by April. Okay. <laughs> And the sales tax is uh, is it still 2.9 uh, ahead of where it was last year? We've appropriated uh, about 1.7 million of fund balance throughout this year. Yes. And we just appropriated another 62,000 as well. And we're still going. It's going to grow to 21 million. Uh, I think so. Good. Yes, Mr. Chairman. That would include uh, what you're planning to appropriate next year in addition to what we budgeted for highway improvements, et cetera, et cetera. So, for example, we next year we appropriated, uh, like we used to do, a million and a half for our public works projects. Right. Well, it's been increased from uh, 2566000 to $3 million paving itself and anything beyond that. The only thing to say is we come out of the farm balance which is where it's not that it could come from. Just one more question. The, um, um, how much of the fund balance are we uh, appropriating for the budget presently to try to keep up? One million two hundred and fifty-seven thousand four hundred and twenty-two dollars. So we are appropriating fund balance to uh, right. help with the operating fund. And that's, that's what's penciled in right now. For nineteen, no, but we're going to reduce that by two hundred and fifty-seven thousand to that's one million. million. So we won't use as much as the uh, as much of the fund balance to make the budget work. General question: uh, is, sure. is there any, uh, just in terms of general exposure, trying to look into the future? Is, is there a line item here that uh, looks like it may have the potential for <coughs> significant increase, or something that, uh, or do we have it pretty well covered? Or uh, <coughs> um, line items? Uh, well, we'll we'll see how things go next year with bail reform. Uh, whether the DA only asked for one additional position, uh, and I think he was he was he was pretty clear uh, when he did so that um, he it's possible that they may need more, but he would want to see how it goes with just one, see if they can handle it. Uh, with the seven ADAs they already have, they have one of the highest caseloads in uh, the state, so uh, getting the eighth will bring their caseloads a little bit more to normal. But that's under current circumstances. So that is very much a wild card in my in my mind. Uh, the the budget that we put together I, is adequate for all of the uh, obligations that we will have. Uh, I guess the best answer to that is in addition to seeing how that bail discovery goes, it's whatever the next state budget contains. Uh, it just uh, as you're speaking, I'm thinking here. It seems to me the 
the wild card may very well be uh, what the sheriff mentioned in terms of the jail. Okay? If we indeed take this population and we have 50 human beings housed there uh, and we have personnel in place designed to handle full house from a personnel perspective, from a labor perspective, how, how indeed is that handled? That to me, uh, looking forward uh, with all the rules and regs of the state of New York. And uh, so years back, uh, <coughs> the corrections people come to us and we had 13 people and uh, now due to unforeseen circumstances. So I, that, that to me, looking forward is a, is a real question. I, I believe we'll have an opportunity to cut down overtime costs. Uh, because there there will be fewer situations where you have a pod that you need to staff where you don't have someone on regular time to staff it so you don't have to call in that overtime shift. But until the state uh, does something formally on the staffing analysis and the staffing mandates, we won't be cutting any, any personnel. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Diamond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, what's your recommendation for your <coughs> contingency account for this budget? I think it's... 275, I believe. Does that in take into consideration any labor issues? It does not. Are we appropriating monies in the budget for labor issues? No, we're taking a different view on that this year, and that's under advice of council uh, in, in the interest of actually doing the negotiation. Uh, we all felt that uh, it weakens our hand if we if we have that okay. appropriation. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Wild. Frank, thank you. Um, could you just go through the fund balance moves that we were talking about prior? Uh, I just want to understand a little bit better. I, I heard the word 19.9 now. Right. Um, just a week or so ago, we moved uh -huh. one point something million, I think, into special reserve accounts. Uh, 330,000. Well, no, wait a minute. I'll get my paper. I thought it was 600 plus 300. Yep. yep. It's like a million dollars. Is that, is that included in the, the 19.9 or was it 99 it, after that was appropriated and moved into reserve? After that, it was 650,000 then. That okay. brought it down to 19 million three approximately. So, and we went to 19.3. And the reason why I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm asking is because I always get worried when we say, well, we're going to appropriate some money out of the fund balance to balance the budget, right? And then we're still going to end up with more money in the fund balance by the time the 2020 comes around. Is that the beginning of 2020, the end of 2020 we're talking about having over 20 million, 21 million? What we're talking about is the fund balance right now being at 19.9 going down to 19.3. We have in the budget, we have a budgeted sales tax at the 2017 level. So what will bring it up from that amount to the higher amount uh, is due to the sales tax collections from this year, from 2019. Okay. But we're still using one point something million. I think I heard we're going to use fund balance to balance the budget. We're going to use one million. One million. We, we appropriate fund balance to balance the budget to make the expenses and the revenues balance out. That doesn't mean that we use the appropriated fund balance. It becomes, um, it beca the, the, the fund balance as we refer to it is the unassigned fund balance. When you appropriate fund balance, it becomes assigned fund balance. So it comes out of your rainy day fund and it's set aside. We don't use it though. The, the, the reason why that million dollars is in there is you have about we budget the salaries exactly and the benefits off of the salaries exactly in terms of who's who's working at the time we run those and you're going to have a natural vacancy factor of, of about a million dollars so rather than raise taxes on that million dollars that you're never going to spend you do a fund balance appropriation that you're never going to need and then it just moves back into the correct yeah. okay thank you yes uh claudia on the personnel request, it's something that I'd like to bring to the committee for your consideration. Given that we did appropriate money into the reserve funds for the capital infrastructure project, and we know through Chairman Conover's efforts that we have the hundreds of millions of dollars of projects out there throughout the county, um, our <coughs> planning department could use 
some um, additional personnel to help manage all of those projects that we would like to see moving forward. And we need some succession planning, as Mr. Lamont has already talked about, to his committee. And his request would be for 2021 that we add a senior planner into that department. And I'd like the committee to consider accelerating that timeline and at least putting a planner, senior planner position into the 2020 budget. Maybe we don't fill it right away, but at least we would have that position already available. I talked to Ryan and I think there's some wiggle room in the budget, but I, if it, the committee would be agreeable to that, having him take a closer look, working with our budget office, I'm sure, to see if we can put something into the budget for 2020 <coughs> and maybe not filling that till halfway through the year, something to that effect. But I think we have a lot of things going on in the county that could really use some professional oversight and management in our planning department. And we're gonna need to do it next year probably. Why not get a jump start on that this year? No, I, uh, I'm going to keep an, an open mind on uh, Supervisor Bramer's uh, request. Uh, uh, I need, need more time to think about it, to evaluate it, and uh, just to see if uh, it, uh, it, it, it makes sense. But uh, that's a, I just like to state that if I can. Thank you. So just to, to give some background uh, and flesh out where we are on all of that, uh, we have uh, this was done in the last budget committee meeting. We're going to assign $50,000 right now into uh, a fund for capital project assessments that will be administered by planning. And we've appropriated $100,000 into the budget that is in front of you now, the, the budget officer's uh, tentative budget for that same purpose. So that's a total of $150,000 that at this, at this point is assigned to capital planning but not yet allocated to specific projects. Um, the, it's on the personnel side, uh, the planning director suggested in his budget request for 2020 that we consider in 2021 uh, upgrading um, his current uh, junior planner and then uh, bringing on an additional full-time planner for the purpose of uh, not just doing the capital uh, planning, uh, keeping that, that, that five-year plan going, uh, which is a positive thing that we've done and we don't want to see that go, go to nothing but also handling additional responsibilities in the planning department. I do yes, think Mr. Simpson. That it is something we should, should you know, consider. Um, you know, I don't think we have to do this next month or next week. And we're going to rush this. We need to put this issue. Beatty. Yeah, I'm, I'm never for really growing government. Uh, uh, I just think that since we're the second largest employer in our in the county, I, I, have a, I, have, I take that very reserved position whenever we're adding any more jobs uh, to the county. But um, so this one, I don't see an immediate need at all. In fact, uh, seems like Mr. Moore laid out a very uh, well-documented timeline on how this is occurring now. There are funds in there. So I see no need at all at this time to, to, uh, to, to uh, put in another position in the government. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, we can look at it down the road, but now is not the time. Supervisor Wild. Mr. Chairman, thanks. I, I guess uh, I'm not sure which way to look at this other than uh, understanding the consequences. And the way I think about it is, is there opportunities or are there opportunities we're missing today by not having that planner role filled? <coughs> and I'm not sure if you can answer that. Mr. Moore, maybe? Or? Oh, when uh, Claudia mentioned this to me yesterday in uh, she indicated that uh, I think it was environmental issues and like a lake manager type position or water, or water resource manager, uh, the, a planner to uh, take a look at our rail corridor, which uh, 
seems to be going towards a trail than a than a rail, and also uh, economic development uh, beyond tourism. So those those were the three things that she had indicated to me that uh, this person this person seen, quote senior planner could be not some Jerry's town. It seemed like reasonable endeavors. Do we need to make a decision now or should we wait until March or June? Does it make a difference? Process wise, pro what, what, what's in front of you now is what's there. So the departments all make requests for personnel right. for the for the following budget year, and then the budget officer makes a determination as to which ones uh, are supported in the tentative budget and which ones are not. So that right now is a reflection of that process that we always follow. Um, the, the the point in time where it might be appropriate to consider doing an additional personnel request beyond what was requested for 2020 by the department. It's at the discretion of the budget officer and the board of supervisors. I mean, uh, it's it's all frank right now, uh, and then when it rolls over into the board's column, it's it's all the the the, the rest to you as well. So it's really it's up to you. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, I think you know how how you do it is less important to me. Uh, whether we do it within the budget or we just generally recognize that at some point uh, that we're going to need to uh, uh, beef this up because we've got um, a lot of communities uh, in the county uh, submitting all kinds of projects and, uh, and needs out there. And those are backed up with, in the program they've developed, you'll see, are backed up with uh, grant opportunities, federal, state, et cetera, to um, help these communities secure uh, 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 grants and then you've got to administer the grants and you know there's also, uh, I see this as a, as a real expanding uh, situation within the county you know some of the projects uh, are uh, uh, and, they, and they're all different types and you'll see here soon uh, uh, some are fundamental public works projects but most of them have very significant environmental implications as well uh, especially uh, sewer improvements some of them are water improvements, uh, um, all kinds of uh, uh, public improvements, including on the county side. Um, and so I, there's a whole host of things that I think uh, uh, challenges are going to be in front of us. And we're going to need, we are going to need some manpower to be able to uh, properly service all of that. Um, uh, and so whether we do that now, whether we put it in the budget now in anticipation, or we do it later, I just would hope that there would be a, a general understanding going forward that, uh, that that we may not be able to do all that we want to do with the staff that we have. Uh, they're pretty maxed out now. And quite frankly, so is our county administrator and having a, a really high talent person that he can turn to uh, relative to some of these assignments wouldn't be such a bad thing either. Supervisor Gary. And my question is, I guess I don't understand the program 100% because is the county going to do some of the work for us so we don't have to do it because we had to put together the list so that <coughs> we've already done some of the work on most of these projects. I, I guess I don't understand. Are you taking the burden off the towns and you're going to shift it to the county to do? Or is well, the county has drafted, do? We haven't drafted the rules for the road yet relative to exactly how we're going to approach it. A lot of these projects and a lot of these municipalities. I mean, we have, we're doing the inventory now, but that project alone, just doing that, for example. But yeah, I would say. I mean, if my way of thinking, I could even see the uh, resident, the, the reserve relative to infrastructure being uh, there for uh, not just county, uh, but, uh, but municipal projects as well. I could see that uh, uh, helping uh, uh, in a lot of different ways. We're going to have to develop the rules of the road relative to that, but I think just the reservation of some money. I, I, how much did you put in, Frank? 150. Yeah, total. Yeah. 150 for now, for now. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I could see this evolving. Uh, I would hope it would evolve and develop into a full-blown countywide infrastructure program where we were being very, very active in in 
having these projects take place. And to do that, we're going to uh, certainly a lot of the need outstrips uh, a lot of the, uh, talent that exists at the local level, especially some of our smaller communities. But well, that, that's my question. I mean, you know, we put together our plan, and we we use their engineering firm to help us. And, you know, we've administered our own grant, and and if we're going to turn some of that work over to the county, maybe that can support it a little bit more. You know, because we've done a lot of work already to get those programs into the county. That's, that's all I'm asking. If the county's going to take it on, then maybe I can support uh, more staff over there if they're going to re relinquish it. We're going to have to relinquish some of the work that we've done already. And that's we do why, now. That's why, if I mind, that's why I say, you know, whether we budget for it now or do we, it later. we do it later in, in, in at the capital, I just want everyone to understand that this is a, a pretty massive undertaking uh, that we're talking about. Here. This is not some small thing. And it has all kinds of implications uh, in every municipality. Supervisor Hogan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, um, hearing the comments that have been made about this particular position, I agree wholeheartedly with the concept of getting out in front of this, but I would like to see the personnel department come up with a detailed job description, bring it back to the budget committee, maybe the personnel committee, include something with grant writing, somebody that can administer grants and follow up with the grants, and maybe when these projects come to fruition, through the county when the funding becomes available for capital infrastructure, we'll have a person in place. So I'd like to continue with that dialogue, but let's come up with some detailed job descriptions in regards to that position so we can talk about it later. Supervisor Wall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one more comment after this discussion. I think it's wise to wait, not budget for it, but wait until we see more of the capital plan and we can then determine what our priorities are and how much effort that we need to put into it right away versus delaying it for maybe four or five months, six months, what have you. So that, that would be my, my recommendation. Mr. McDivitt? Yeah, I, I would concur with uh, Supervisor Diamond. Uh, let's get a little more specific. Let's kind of understand this uh, a little bit more. And uh, hey, if, it, uh, if after going through that process, uh, it seems to make sense, let's, let's rock and roll. Frank, I got a simple just, I, I, I'm looking through all your cuts, I have no problem with them. Uh, why did we um, raise the um, Southern Adirondack Library, 10,000? That was the only one you raised. What were you thinking of that? Or? The only, uh, to provide more funding to the libraries. But they, they only requested 45, and you raised it 10 to 50. No, it was at 45. At 45, so you raised it 10. But everybody else, we, you cut. Well, I wouldn't say everybody, no. Uh, everybody on this sheet is there. Well, on, the, on this no, sheet. No, I'm not, I'm not debating. I'm glad you cut all of them. I'm just curious why <laughs> we're just you raised the 10,000 on one we're, thing. We're just trying to encourage people in Warren <laughs> County to read. Okay. Right. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Some of that money actually trickles down to the smaller libraries. Uh, no, I just didn't. <laughs> What was your thinking at that time? Yes, I, I think uh, the cuts you're seeing are cuts that we made to departmental budgets. Uh, the outside organizations that we fund, you know, Cornell Cooperative Extension and so on, the Soil and Water District, uh, they all make uh, set, uh, their own requests. And uh, we went with the, the requests that all those agencies made. And in some cases, there was incremental increases, cost of living and, and whatnot. Uh, that wouldn't show up on this sheet because uh, what you're seeing on here is only what we did to the request. So they're not the only outside entity that, that got a little bit more. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Yes, Claudia. I don't want to belabor the point too much, but I did reach out to Trish Benninger, and there is a description for the senior planner. And there are already a lot of things that the county is doing um, in a hodgepodge manner, if you ask me, like what we're doing. If you said, are we missing any opportunities? There is a recycling education grant every 
every year, and we never applied for it this year. We tried to get it done um, because DPW now has a, an environmental analyst one, but she's actually leaving county, so we are we might not get that grant in that application. And there are tons of stuff that we are doing and have available to you to us or the county through the climate smart program. That I can show you the action list from the past board meetings that you know about. <coughs> funding to the county and without a professional person working on that we're going to miss opportunities and we already have and, and it's just from my perspective you know i the environmental concerns care so there are a lot of environmental issues that we're, we're missing out but there are certainly other places too like have, like frank said someone to help us manage what we're doing going forward with the railroad corridor and how are we going to manage the hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we're allocating has already talked about setting up a committee to do that, but you know, our time as supervisors only goes so far with these things forward. We need staff to make these things happen and, and happen in a professional plan manner. So I would urge you to, to think about, like Supervisor Hogan said, creating it as a as a reflection of our intent to do that down the road. Maybe we don't fill it right away, but it's in the budget ready for us. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, the uh, what was the growth rate for tax cap? Was it two to the two percent even this year? Uh, officially, but with our carryover, it's two point seven nine. Two point seven nine, and right now uh, you're looking at a growth of point eight five. Correct. Point eight five. Wow. And it's possible it could be less than that before uh, before Friday. Oh, really? Yes. Go, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Liggett. Yeah, thank you. Uh, having spoken with the uh, director of planning, uh, you know, thinking about transition and, and such, what Supervisor Bramer brought up has a good list of uh, and direction for the county to support that, but it does need discussion with that department as well in order to integrate the some for personnel to pick up uh, and, and polish and um, then put forward and to make it Right. Any other uh, questions or comments or complaints? Uh, hearing none, uh, I guess a motion to adjourn. Moved by Mr. McDivitt, seconded by Mr. Merlino. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. <laughs>